please start with your name, please? My name is Sema. Sema. So, uh, can you tell us what are you doing here at the camp, please? I am here um, as a medic, taking care of the occupants. What kind of uh, help people come looking for here? It's a variety of things. Um, in the beginning, we had a bit of a flu wave, so we had a lot of people coming in with various symptoms and and, uh, and a lot of aches and pains, and of course the cold just amplified everything. So everything from handing out vitamins to um, cold pills and cough syrup to um, keeping an eye on people that have broken limbs and infections and just sort of you know long term care for some of the people that don't otherwise have access to medical yeah. um, benefits so that's kind of the scope of what we what we are tackling here but how many people have said that is how many people usually come through here every day it really varies so there's been days where I've had you know a couple of people come for their vitamins and then there's been days where it's been like we've been running off our feet like endless endless so it really depends on the day. Um, the population of the camp is slightly lower now than it was two weeks ago. So, you know, two weeks ago it was a lot more traffic. Now it's just kind of um, a lot of people that are just got the cold and and whatnot. It's, so it's not as not as busy as it once was. Where do you think all the people went? Uh, probably home, because <laughs> you know we do have a you know a large population of homeless people in this camp but most of which at the beginning were not homeless they were more here for the political reasons yeah. um, not out of necessity so um, I think that because you know the weather's turned and with all of these legality issues um, a lot of people have opted to go home. A few days ago there was uh... Can I have cough syrup please? Thank you. Well, this stuff? Yes. Oh, like that? No, that guy is coming for some medicine, eh? Yeah. Probably got the cold like everybody else. But okay. we don't give it to them. You put them on the table and they serve themselves. Oh, okay. Um, because we're not, uh, I don't know, legality or whatever. We don't hand it. We're not dispensing. Um, we're just making available. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. No problem, man. Yeah, a, a day before that, there's another guy who had an OD. Yeah, can you, had, can you talk yeah. about that? No, people are saying all sorts of things except the truth. Yeah. Um, yeah, the first overdose um, was again, as you know, we've got these notices up all over our camp um, that the Vancouver Police Department has alerted, as well as Insight has let us know that there's heroin on the streets that's laced with methadone. Yeah. And methadone takes about, even when injected, about 15 to 20 minutes to kick in so if you're using it seems like you know your dose isn't been high so you're like oh well, this isn't very good so you dose up again and that's why the overdoses have happened so frequently um, with this certain type of heroin I suppose um, so it's a missed dose it's just a it's a it's a totally uninformed like it's not suicidal people it's not you know even regular drug users so you know it's just a missed dose and, and when it's an unregulated uncontrolled substance we have no way of, of knowing what's in it or where it's coming yeah. from so that poses a lot of a lot of problems but yeah it was one of our medics that saved uh, a young man's life um, that first time and then the second time we were just too late so okay. uh, what kind of training do you guys have to give treatments we have a variety of training um, we've got everything from RNs to occupational first aid to um, army medics, um, yeah, kind of a selection of, of most of those. I, I'm not, I think we've got a couple psychologists that are on call or psychiatrists that are on call. Um, a lot of outreach, outreach workers, like we have a lot of uh, RNs from Insight specifically who come and do a lot of harm reduction um, and do us a lot of training in that respect. So we, we've been doing a lot of skill sharing as well yeah. within the medic community um, you know we have street medic training courses that we kind of try to put on every week and and uh, and you know we're always talking about our various experiences as well which helps us because um, you know you may you may be an RN but you've never worked on the street as a medic before so you might have more medic training than me but I've been on the street you know so we share a lot of those things and uh, you know whereas I've never been in an ER before so I don't have that training but that's kind of the scope of where we're at okay. when it comes to training yeah and where does the medicine come from most of it's donated 
um, as long as it's unopened and unused. We do have a budget um, from Occupy Vancouver of $400 a week, which sounds like a lot, but it's not very much um, because we have people cycling through every single day for, you know, cold pills and vitamins. Like it, we go through it pretty darn quickly. So that's most of the time where it all comes from. Like how long do you think this is gonna go on? <laughs> I really don't know. Um, I really don't know. When uh, I've got my medic hat on now, so yeah. we basically stay and you know until the last person's gone because that's our job as a medic. Yeah. Um, that's what we're. Um, our, that's a responsibility that we've taken on for ourselves. So we'll be here as long as we need to be here, and then we'll move to wherever we need to move to. We're gonna move to a new <laughs> space or just gonna. I, be I honestly don't know. Um, yeah. We have a contingency committee that's yeah. been talking about our different options and our different potential locations and logistics of all that. Yeah. So we're, we're still, we're, you know, the court hearing obviously has a big part of that decision making. Like, you know, we need to kind of wait to see what happens in court for us to move forward and make some of our decisions. So okay. um, that's, you know, obviously happening right now as we speak, um, but it's also going to be happening over the next couple of days. So. Oh, so it's still going on at the courts? Yeah, today was the first day of the second okay, injunction. injunction hearing. Yeah. So well, we have to wait and see what uh, what's going on in court before we can really entertain any ideas of moving or staying put or anything like that. So. Oh, okay.